Hey guys, I am Devin Windsor and this is my very first vlog. Welcome to my kitchen. You are here in my personal kitchen. This isn't some fake video of me cooking or pretending like I'm some amazing chef when in reality I just cook for my free time for myself, my friends, my family. This is all fun, this is all me, it's all real. So this is me in my kitchen, in my house, just showing you guys some good food that I personally make on the regular. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So, for my very first vlog, I am gonna be making my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, I know that might seem a bit boring, but it was actually the first thing I ever baked with my mom, so I thought it was very appropriate. My first vlog, the first thing I ever baked, chocolate chip cookies, so here we go. And uh, a little surprise in the recipe, which I'm gonna share with you guys, is that it's not just a normal chocolate chip cookie recipe. There's a surprise ingredient, which you guys might be a little bit weirded out by. Well, maybe not. Maybe you guys have made it before, but it makes the cookies just that much better. Now, this recipe is only for 24 cookies or less, I like to make them kind of big. So if you have a lot of people that you want to feed, I would double the recipe and uh, go from there. So here we go. First things first, your main bowl. I'm starting off with brown sugar. There's actually no granulated sugar in this recipe, just brown sugar. And I'm gonna to cream together brown sugar and a half a cup of butter. That's room temperature. Preferably not melted butter or cold butter, just room temperature butter. And that goes in there. And I'm going to cream together these ingredients in my handy dandy mixer. Whoa, just pass them it in. Then I'll cream together those ingredients. This recipe is super, super easy. I can make it in like under 10 minutes if you don't include the chilling of the dough and the actual bake process, but basically I can make it in my sleep. So the reason I created this vlog was just mainly because Instagram and Twitter, those are such great platforms for you guys and my fans to get to know me better, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different than just post pictures that are very, you know, contrived and planned out. And I try to be in the moment with things I'm posting, but it's hard when I'm such a perfectionist. So I did this just so I could talk freely. You know, I'm filming it. It's literally on my own setup. And I just wanted it to be something, something, uh, I don't know, different. So one of my favorite things to do is cook. So I just figured if you combine my favorite thing, plus me and make it in a video to share with you guys. It might be somewhat entertaining. I don't know, let's see. Bear with me, it's my first vlog. I didn't say already. So I'm getting these two things creamed together. I'm gonna just turn it up. Maybe go a little faster. Now, once I've got that, I'm just gonna take my bowl and it's nice and creamed together. We're gonna add a little bit of vanilla, which makes everything taste better. Got it. Just a little bit, I'm gonna eyeball it. And my egg, just one egg. Okay. Now, super complicated. I'm gonna cream that together in my mixer. Super easy. Anyone can do this. Now, if you don't have an electric mixer like the one I have, you can use a hand mixer, which is just by hand and has those two little things. And you can do that. Or, I mean, I've never mixed the dough by actual hand, like stirred it. I'm sure it's possible, it's just a lot more flavor. So I highly recommend going to these bad boys because you can make cookies, 
cake batter, frostings, pizza dough, pasta dough. I mean, honestly, you can make everything in there, so it's just so much easier. I highly recommend it. And, okay. Okay. Now, those are mixed together. You'll get like a. I don't know what that was. Anyways, you have this in your bowl. It's starting to smell like cookie dough. And my house is very gadgety, I guess. I don't know what's going on. So, I have my thing in my mixer. Now, next up, I'm going to do baking soda. Half teaspoon, a little bit of salt, quarter teaspoon. And my surprise ingredients, vanilla pudding mix. So good. One of my best friends from St. Louis showed me this a recipe using instant vanilla pudding mix. And I was honestly hooked up for the first time. It is so good. It makes the cake, it makes the, sorry, makes the cookie dough a little bit cakey, but still really ooey and gooey. It just gives it that, I don't know, it just gives it a really good taste. You should really try it. Highly recommended. It's nothing crazy, just a little bit of vanilla pudding mix in the batter and uh, a little less flour. So I have my salt, my baking soda, and my vanilla pudding mix in the bowl. Now I'm gonna put it back to the mixer. I know it may seem like there's a lot of steps to this recipe, but it's really not compared to the other, compared to other recipes. It's very, it's very easy. Just like to do it in stages. If I'm baking, you have different stages in which you add the ingredients. So for cookies, for example, it's the wet ingredients first and then the dry ingredients. So flour will be the last ingredient and I will add that in stages in the dough so it doesn't get like too floury. And I'm not sure what the exact scientific reasoning is behind adding flour in stages. I just know you do it and it makes really good cookies. So, again, I'm not a professional chef. Okay, so the batter is starting to get really delicious. Let's hope that doesn't cool down. I'm putting a little bit of the flour in the bowl, and then I'm putting it back in the mixer. Oh no, some dough fell. It's okay. And down. All right, back in the mixer. You know what? Next time I'm just gonna pour the flour in the bowl directly, not bring it over. Smart. Just mix it up. You don't want to turn it on too high when you first put the flour in, otherwise you're gonna have a flour facial. And I've done that before. Turn it down. Add some more flour. Yeah, I added it in like three stages. This recipe is pretty small. Sometimes I double and triple it, and in that case, it takes me like eight times to put the flour in. Um, yeah. All right, last bit of flour. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna get a spatula because I like to fold in my chocolate chips. sometimes the mixer like crunches them up at the bottom, which is actually not bad, but finish mixing this up. dough. Oh mm, my god, it's really so hard for me not to eat the cookie dough. But a little trial is okay. 
Uh huh. Just as good as I remember. Okay, chocolate chips in. And then now I just mix the chocolate chips. You know what? This is slightly flimsy of a spatula, so. I'm gonna get another one. I'm just gonna use a spoon. Not to make a mess like me. Okay. Now this is the one you will labor. <laughs> Voila, I have my dough. Now the next important step in this is to actually chill the dough in the refrigerator because if you chill it, it goes in the oven and it bakes more evenly. This I do know. Because if you put it in right now, it would just fall really flat. And if you put, if you chill it and then you put it in, it bakes throughout the cookie and it stays like in a more ball shape. And that leaves the center more gooier, which we all like the weird cookies. Yes, I do. So yeah, this goes in the fridge. in the fridge for at least one hour and then we bake it. In the meantime, in the meantime, I'm gonna set up my baking sheet, which is here. I have this baking sheet, it's by all clad. It's, it's pretty thick, I think it's like double panned so that the bottom of the cookies don't stick faster than the tops because sometimes in the oven you'll notice that the bottom is like either brown, burnt, or extra crispy and the tops aren't as done. So this is just better for more even baking. I also like to use parchment paper or baking sheets when I'm baking just because it doesn't stick at all. And a cookie cutter or a cookie scoop, which is just so much easier. You don't have to get dirty. See it? In one hour, I will scoop those out. Well, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm gonna grab the dough out of the fridge, which has been chilling for an hour. My oven, I'm setting to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So, while that's heating up, I'm using my handy cookie scooper, and my dough is all chilled, which means for easy scooping and better even baking. So, I'm gonna try it's still okay. It's still okay. Now, I'm scooping these out, and I'm only putting them like an inch and a half apart, just because they will ah! It won't spread too much because the dough is chilled. And if you don't chill the dough, they might get super flat and run into each other. So. Okay. Now, I'm putting the dough back in the fridge. Because I still have some leftover, so I'm gonna have to bake a couple rounds. Pop these in the oven. And we're good to go. These are gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how well done you like them. I like them quite underdone, so a little less. Okay guys, the cookies are done, so I'm gonna use my handy dandy mitt. And I'm gonna take them out of the oven. And these cooked for exactly 14 minutes and 
if you can see, they did not spread at all, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm just gonna let these bad boys cool a little bit and then um, break into them. We'll see what they look like. Okay, so they've been cooling down for a little bit. I like to eat them when they're still a little warm. So they're these cute little guys, bite-sized, or mm, a couple bites. And they're, um, they're just as good as I remember them to be. Mm. And honestly, they're the perfect balance between sugary from the chocolate chips, but because there's not extra granulated sugar on top, they're not overly sugarly, sugary. They're perfect. Mm. Well, guys, I want to thank you for joining me. On my very first vlog, I hope you enjoy it. If you guys have any recommendations on the next vlog, what I should make, what you want to see me bake or cook, I am open to suggestions. In the meantime, I will catch you next time. I'm gonna eat all of these.